good bank holiday morning. <laughs> good Monday morning, it's bank holiday and I'm trying to squish myself into these trousers. I think I mentioned in my last video about trousers always being a bit of a difficulty for me and it's because I'm tall, I've got a long torso, they always ride up my butt. <laughs> And these are vintage, so I feel like high-waisted vintage trousers do it even more. But we're going out because it's my sister's birthday today, so we're going to Tranguainton in Penzance. And I just got her present. I actually was going to film how I do this, but I forgot. <laughs> but I showed you in the other vlog how I've got a drawer filled with um, wrapping paper, tissue paper, ribbons that I save and bags, so that's what I've done, so I've not had to buy anything new. And I actually think it looks much more special. So we've got two presents in here wrapped with beautiful ribbon, I thought this was very spring, and then this is a nice um, satin cream ribbon. And then this bag is one that I got when I bought something from Naked Generation. Lots of brands do beautiful bags like this. And I think that that is an addition to the present because if I received a bag like this, I'd be like, oh, that's such a nice bag. I can use it for things. The car has a flat tire. Are you joking? Can you please be serious? April Fool! <laughs> oh my God, I was about to be so stressed because <laughs> we've got to leave in five minutes. Oh my goodness me, you got that on camera. I was so stressed. The thing with Alex is his face says it all, so I was like, is he being serious? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so this is a nice little ad addition to the present because she can store something nice in this or use it for something. Um, so that's her present. I'm wearing the top my friend made me. I feel so thrifty. How gorgeous. I almost want to pay her to make me another one because I love it so much. And then these jeans are vintage. I've got them in Happy Days Vintage. They are riding up a little bit. But I do have a booty, so um, I do think that things tend to ride up a little bit on my bum. And then my boots, which I hope you can see. Alex, can you check if they can see my boots? Uh, Very good. Mm, not quite. Could you move the camera down a bit? Here we go. So these boots, can you see them now? Yeah. They are it's from bit, the brand. A bit wobbly. What's it say on it? Uh, Can you come look? I need my assistant. Oh my gosh. Wait. What did they say? <clears throat> the flamboyant. There you go. So these are vegan boots that they sent me and I haven't worn them yet. So I'm excited. They're very cool, aren't they? So they do them in vegan leather. They do lots of different um, colors. And they also had some like, uh, what they called? You know, like um, loafer kind of style ones. So but I don't have a brown pair. And then I've got this vegan leather handbag that matches very nicely from Bean London. And I actually rate this leather because some vegan leather is iffy, but this one, Bean London, I feel like literally feels and looks like leather and it's such high quality and it hasn't tarnished at all. And I wear it quite a lot. And this one, which is my day-to-day -day handbag is from Canusa. And actually I want to get this in brown as well because I use it so much and it literally looks brand new still. I have travelled with it so much and there's no sign of any sort of tearing or anything around here because these are the places it tends to weaken. Thank you, assistant. Oh, it wasn't filming. It was very funny. <laughs> We've got to go now. And I've just popped on this nice cosy jacket which is also from... No, it's not. It's from the... There's a vintage shop in Helston. If you're near Helston, there's a cute little shop there where I got my Ohio State jumper. And this is nice and cosy. I do think that this makeup I got from Hourglass is too pale, though. I can see it on the camera. Which is okay. It's just a little bit too bright. Alex has copied my outfit. I actually got dressed before you. Same. 
Trung Quentin, ready for a little Easter hunt. It's such a nice day. Who are feels we like, hunting? Feels like spring, the bunny. The deadliest game of all. The Easter bunny. Bunnies. <laughs> Bank holiday weekend is over. Uh, I think I vlogged yesterday, but I probably stopped vlogging, which seems to be an issue for me because it was my sister's birthday. We had a lovely, lovely day. We went to Trenguainton in Penzance and I'd never been there before, which is strange because it's not far from us and it's so gorgeous. We had such a lovely day. They had an Easter trail for kids, which my niece loved. That was so cute and the gardens are beautiful. I really want to go back in the summer because they have so many hydrangeas and obviously they're not in bloom right now and I really want to go back when they're all in bloom because I think it will be stunning. Um, and then we went back to my parents and had a nice meal and cake and me and Alex were just <clears throat> playing hide and seek with, um, with B, my niece, for just a very long time. She's full of energy and we were just running around the house and it's very cute. I had such a good time. So that was yesterday and we also came home. We were so tired, I think just bank holiday weekend is tiring because you're always doing so much. Uh, we came home, had dinner, I made like a ramen and then we watched the movie Anatomy of a Fool or The Fool, Anatomy of the Fool. It was incredible. If you haven't seen that film, if you're a fan of true crime documentaries, and thrillers then definitely watch that movie it is a, a dramatized movie it's not a documentary but it's just phenomenal with how they acted wrote directed put together that entire film i was on the edge of my seat and <clears throat> it was one of the best films i've seen in so long i feel like this year there's been so many great movies i've seen so that was such a great film. And then Poor Things, when we went and saw that, that blew my mind. I absolutely loved that film. Um, but yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, definitely go watch it because I loved it. And we watched it on Amazon Prime. Um, and it was just one of those ones we just were like, oh, let's go watch that. I've seen that that was nominated for an Oscar or won an Oscar. I can't remember. But I know that it was like in the award uh, lineup and I recognised the title. I was like, let's watch this. And it was so good. But that meant we stayed up quite late, so I'm quite tired this morning. I didn't set my alarm, so I woke up at like eight, which is a nice little lion on a Tuesday. And I'm kind of taking it easy. I went into the office and just like got bits done that needed to be done quickly, like my memory card needed emptying. I had to send something off quickly. And now I'm at the gym, back for another week of the gym. I think I might have lost my streak. Where's my phone? Oh, please say I have my phone. Have I left my phone at home? No, I haven't. Thank goodness for that. I was like, I can't do the co-pilot workout. So I really don't want to lose my streak, but I missed a workout last week because it was bank holiday. Um, so which one? I think I'm just gonna, I just, I don't want to lose my streak. I don't want to lose my streak. 
Now I think I'm gonna do last Friday's full body because I don't wanna lose my streak. <laughs> Cause I've got 37 days and this is the thing that I do like about Copilot is it kind of, it motivates you to keep um, doing the workouts because I don't want to lose my streak. So I'll do an extra workout this week so I can keep that. So full body, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to take it easy today because I cannot be bothered. <sighs> boy, oh boy, that was challenging. I just uh, was not in the mood and on the app it's got like supersets and I skipped quite a few of those or changed it because I couldn't and I mentioned this in the vlog where I shared my like full kind of workout routine that you really ought to track your cycle I'm gonna harp on about it all the time because like nine times out of ten if I feel this way after a workout it's because of the time in my cycle so I'm on day 17 which means I'm in my luteal phase which means I'm lower in energy, I'm probably a bit moodier, there's hormones that are reducing, um, that means that I'm not not as energetic. As women, we don't uh, function hormonally the same as men who are on a 24 hour hormone cycle. So just give yourself the time to track your cycle and give yourself a break when you feel this way because I think I used to really, really beat myself up when I would have a workout like that. And in hindsight, I only realize that now because I'm tracking my cycle. If I'd had a workout like that in the past without the knowledge of when I was, where I was on my cycle, I would have been like, oh, for goodness sake, like that was such a bad gym workout. Why do I feel this way? And I would have gotten down about it or I would have just been a bit like, oh gosh. And it also decreases your motivation because you're like, that was a crap workout. I don't want to go again tomorrow. Whereas if you acknowledge that sometimes your hormones are to play also bank holiday weekend for me like i had a long weekend i drank alcohol i spent time with family i stayed up later than usual those things all play into it so just give yourself that time to like actually give yourself a break and i have to do it to myself so a little reminder for you um i use the clue app i think my sister uses the flow app there's lots of different ones to track your cycle cycle but it does make the memory card died, but it makes a massive difference. I always have my memory card die when I'm finishing my sentences. It seems to know, so yeah. I'm gonna go home and shower and get started for the day and probably make some tofu scramble or something. Have we got a block of tofu? I think we do, so I think I'll make that. Mm. I've been a boring adult. Me and Alex have been having like a money finance meeting for the last few hours, just organizing our life and all those boring things you have to do as an adult. So we've been doing that for the last few hours and I just haven't been vlogging, um, but I might uh, pick up the camera later because I've got some tidying and organizing to do so we can motivate each other to do that. But now we're just heading out and we might go to Tesco potentially because we don't really have anything in for dinner uh, I'm gonna do the food shop properly tomorrow because the bank holiday it's all a bit skew with and I ran out of time today but um, we'll do that tomorrow and we don't have Riverford coming this week because again I forgot because of bank holiday but we'll go to the shops nonetheless and I'm all cozy it's been very cold today we've had the fire on it is dinner time and I'm making a curry with leftovers so I just unwrapped these from Sunday we have a lot of carrots and parsnips left basically I had a whole box you saw um, in the last vlog. It was a whole box of vegetables. There's only four of us. So there's lots of leftovers than I expected them to be. But the best thing to do is make a curry. So I'm gonna shove these carrots, parsnips. I'm also just gonna chuck that swede in there because that will just get mixed up with everything. Um, I'm not sure what I will do this. I think I'll just have this as a side. This is cauliflower cheese. So I know that's really random, but I don't see why that won't be delicious. <laughs> so I'll serve that as a side. And then I've just got a tin of coconut milk, a tin of butter beans, some dal, some brown rice and an onion. So I'll mix some spices in there and just make a nice big curry. And I'm going to watch Salt Lake City, um, Real Housewives 
of Salt Lake City. If you haven't watched it yet and you are a fan of this kind of TV show, then run and watch this because it is so entertaining, especially when you get to season two. Shit goes down and I've never seen anything like it on Real Housewives. Like the Laura are involved, the FBI, Homeland Security, it is intense. So yes, I'm gonna watch this because I'm hooked and make this nice curry of leftovers. saw that it's sunny i'm looking exceptionally glamorous with these lovely bits of hair i'm gonna go outside because it's sunny and we've been waiting for this so we can get on with the painting so we can paint the doors we can finish the windows finish the paneling i might get on the roof to paint the higher pieces on the office uh, that we haven't started on yet we probably need to sand them though and just get going with it we've decided to not do the guttering just yet because we were looking at it we were like it's not horrendous so we'll redecorate see what it looks like and then maybe later on we could do the gutters because it's just not essential and it yeah it could be something that we do when we do the house ones but we can get some pieces to finish off the guttering and sort of place it and maybe move our water butt as well and if you don't know what i'm talking about go watch my other vlogs because we've been painting the outside of our office for like months now trying to do it in between rain it just takes a long time to um to do it when the weather's bad and also make sure you're doing it properly and sanding all that kind of stuff so let's get to it we've also just booked our flights to my friend's wedding and i'm very excited it's going to be in italy and i'm really looking forward to to that and i just can't wait and if you're watching sophie i can't wait to see you I can't wait for you to get married oh i'm so excited i've been meaning to do that for so long so very happy we've finally done it and i'm in a good mood so let's get outside with the g7x because my other camera's run out of battery and it's kind of quite handy that i've been getting this one out more the hair is still looking ultra glam and alex has picked up some wild garlic so i'm gonna make wild garlic risotto but i'm gonna make like a pesto still and just stir that in i'm sure there are recipes where you can use the wild garlic in a different way but i just really fancy the pesto stirred through the risotto with just some shallots and some peas 
The recipe that I have been using is the BBC Good Food one, but I just sub the Parmesan for nutritional yeast and I add a lot more lemon. So I'll link that, but it's very, very simple, very similar to a normal pesto. And I'm just gonna do about 200 grams of risotto with some shallots, or they, these are either shallots or small onions. I can't tell until I cut them open. I think they're just small onions. <laughs> Hopefully it'd be really yummy. We managed to get quite a lot done and it was very scary actually going that high up, but we figured it out. Um, probably not the safest, so don't, don't follow <laughs> what I did, but I took the risk because I just wanted to get it done and it looks so good. So I'm a bit worried about the weather this week. We really wanted to just get it done this week so that we could just leave it as it's done. But we're not having the best luck here in the UK with the, the rain. It is just constant. And I've never, I don't think I've ever experienced winter or spring with this much rain. It's every day. So it just makes it hard to do anything like that. And I just, I just want it to be done so I can focus on other things because I have a bad habit of starting projects and not finishing them. And the next thing I really want to work on inside the house potentially is our hallway, finishing the hallway and then maybe our dressing room. I kind of would love to figure out in our hallway how to build the covers ourselves. I think that that's something that we could potentially do. Alex may disagree, but it would save us a lot of money and potentially we could have some success with it. So we'll try, but I'm gonna make my dinner now. I'm very hungry, it's five past six. and I'm excited to dig into some pesto risotto. Here it is, looking delightful, cannot wait to dig in. Oh my gosh, so good. Oh my gosh, I added some lemon zest at the end. 10 out of 10. Exactly what was gonna happen.
Good morning. Excuse the mess behind my head. I have been clearing lots recently and there's some bits on top of the bath as a result, but I'm just getting ready. I'm about to film my spring, summer, like wardrobe declutter clear out, which I'll link because I think it's going to go up before this one. Might do, might not. It might not actually. So if it, if it does, I'll link it. And if it doesn't, then stay tuned. I'm really excited to do this. Not that the weather is particularly spring-like, but I have a um, hen do at the end of this month in a secret location. <laughs> and I have a wedding later on in the year. And there's lots of just, it's just, I just wanna get excited for the spring, summer months coming and uh, just really go through my wardrobe. I kind of wish I had got a colour analysis done before doing this, but that's something I think that I'm going to try and arrange for this summer. I did ask you, I think in my previous video, what you think I am. Some people said winter, some people said spring, which, or autumn, which I did not expect. They thought I was warm toned. I do not see myself as warm toned, but my skin is neutral. So this lighting is horrific. Let me actually put my ring light on. That's better. Um, yeah, my skin is actually quite neutral for someone who's pale. My skin is not like cool or warm. I, but then I, I just can't see myself as being a spring because my hair is so dark. And even though this is not my natural hair, technically, my hair naturally was very dark, though it was warm undertone. That's the thing that's confusing. So I need to go see someone who can just exclusively tell me, um, officially tell me what I am. I'm using the Hourglass stuff that I got sent. This is their hydrating skin tint, which is beautiful. And I also just finished up, nearly finished, my Beauty of Joseon SPF 50. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not pink toned, which was always a bit of a struggle for me when I used to buy foundation, because it wasn't like it is now. All pale foundations used to always be pinky. Whereas now, like this one, they can they come in neutral or yellowy tones. Um, yellow tones don't suit me and the reason I don't think I'm a spring is because I don't particularly suit those kinds of like coral or warm colours. I find that colours like that wash me out but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll go see them and they'll tell me. I think I'm a true winter or potentially a dark autumn but then like this is like a corally red and this does look quite nice next to my skin. I don't know. It's confusing to be honest so we'll have to book that but I wanted to do a declutter like with my colour analysis in mind um I have an instinct though and also I think that if you're interested in the whole colour analysis thing which feels very 80s <laughs> you probably have clothes in your wardrobe or maybe you don't maybe you've got it completely wrong but I look in my wardrobe and I think I feel like I must be a winter because I instinctually know what suits me I have a lot of navy I have a lot of pale like um blue colours like I have a lot of grey I have a lot of red and I do have some kind of autumnal colours but I think that's because I just love those colours like I really love um like the kind of burnt oranges and the mar maroons but I don't have like spring colours or um stuff like that the one thing I would be sad about with winter is that winter you kind of I feel like the colours for winter are very I've had a breakout recently and I don't really know why Maybe it's because I've changed a few of my skincare products. My skin needs to get used to it. Yeah, winter is very like bright colours and that's not really very me. Anyway, I will see and I will vlog that. But I'm going to do a big declutter of my wardrobe and I'm going to try everything on. And it's going to be very confronting, but it's not something I've done in the past when I've decluttered or when I've changed my wardrobe around. I have just gone through it and decided, oh, I like this or I don't. And... It's going to be probably a bit triggering because I have a lot of body dysmorphia and a lot of body, like I'm very self-conscious, but I think that I need to be honest with myself about the clothes that I keep in my wardrobe that I never wear because they don't fit me or I don't feel good in them. So I just need to get rid of them and sell them. But that was the hourglass, was it? No, it wasn't actually. I used the, <laughs> I used the Ilia concealer, um, which is a bit darker. Very, very good concealer, I do love it. But I'm actually gonna use a bit of the Hourglass one because it's very airbrushy. They sent it to me the other day and it's a very good concealer. Where is it? Here it is. I'm just gonna pop, it's like a little goes a long way. You don't need much at all. 
it is raining today so I that's why I'm doing this wardrobe declutter because yesterday obviously we got some painting done but today it's kind of like raining on and off and I don't really want to be up a roof and then suddenly it starts raining. I think tomorrow hopefully there's going to be some patches where it's not raining so we'll get we'll carry on tomorrow um and that would be positive but you don't know you know sometimes what well, the forecast is wrong if i get this wardrobe declutter done and it stops raining then we can go outside look how good that mascara is another little package from hourglass so this is their zero animal harmed one perfect red 1000 insects in a single red lipstick zero in this our award-winning ingredient red zero replicates carmine's vibrant red hue with vegan pigments so if you didn't know carmine is used in a lot of makeup to create that red hue and so they've obviously endeavored to create a red lipstick that doesn't have carmine beautiful packaging we're quickly swiftly becoming um hourglass's biggest fan so let's see what tone of red see that this red looks quite brown but i haven't put it on yet wait is this the they've so got a lipstick looks quite matte yeah that's very brown undertone Quite a good red really, because I can imagine that this would suit a lot of skin tones. Not the best application because I haven't used a lip liner, but actually the lipstick's quite accurate at putting it on. That is very beautiful, isn't it? It's um, really matte. I've never had a lipstick like this. It looks like I've got powdered and then they've got one of their um, their glossy balm, which I have now become obsessed with. In fact, I have another one here. What colour is this one? So the, the nude one that they sent me, I have been wearing like every day since they sent it because it's so pretty. Where are you? Have they already sent it to me? Impulse. No, this is Thrill. So Impulse is red but it seems more let's compare yeah so the the thrill one is much more red yeah this is quite a bright red if you compare the two this would actually look quite nice on top of this because it seems quite similar but let's whack this on top to make it not matte anymore to replicate emily ratikowski's look with her adorable dog my goodness that's gorgeous i'm not used to this kind of expensive beautiful makeup but it makes such a difference like how easy that was to apply and create such a neat red lip and i've not used any lip liner i don't think it works with this blusher at all um i think if i was to do this again i would use a little bit of the lipstick for the blusher or something a bit more or something a bit darker because it's too pink Makes your teeth look nice and white. I think the um, pink cheeks are throwing me off, but gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm gonna wipe this off though, because I don't wanna be wearing red lipstick today. Let's try the balm on its own. Because I think that seems what she's got. Doesn't look like she's got the dark lipstick underneath. It's so glossy. For a balm, so it doesn't feel like lip gloss, it's so glossy. So I would say that looks more warm toned. Which one suits me better? Obviously the pink is maybe throwing it off a bit, but cute. And final thing to put on my face before I switch videos is the Bare Minerals strength and length serum infused brow gel i've gone back to just doing this kind of thing for my eyebrows because i found filling them in never matched my eyebrow color so my eyebrows are my actual hair color not that far off maybe a bit lighter than my, my dyed hair filling them in i could never find the color that was matching because it always looked very brown and i would watch videos back and be like you can really see 
but I filled my eyebrows in and probably not very well. So I do prefer now just a little brow gel. And I swiftly got over the laminating. If you remember, I did that a few times, but the upkeep and the interim between getting it done, not for hairy eyebrowed girls because they pluck a lot of, if you're gonna laminate your eyebrows and you've got big eyebrows, they have to pluck a lot off because it makes your eyebrows very like, you know, up. And then after two weeks, I would just have loads of regrowth and it didn't look very nice. So that'll do pig. Right, time to do my wardrobe, yay. I have been quite literally trying, I've been literally trying on all my clothes all day long. I'm so pooped, but I hope you appreciate that video if you go and watch it. And my nose is all blowy and sniffy because I'm allergic to like, you know, like dust in fibers and fabrics. It always sets me off and just dusty things. So yeah, I'm so glad I got through it. I've done all of my clothes. I haven't, I need to do my accessories and my shoes tomorrow. And then if there's any bits in the wash that are kind of like significant items of my clothing, I won't bother with like t-shirts or basics, but if there's like a dress or a jumper in the wash that I've not left in, I'll film that tomorrow. And please, if you've seen that video, if you do watch it, let me know what you thought, because I've never done this before. I've tried everything on. In the past, I've just kind of gone through and talked to you, whereas this time I put it on and expressed it. And one thing I did realize is how much less I think that I've decluttered this time or how much of my clothes I absolutely love, which is always a good sign. <laughs> but now I'm gonna make dinner. I think we're just gonna have some sticky tofu and <gasps> rice. Oh. Well, we are gonna do red, roasted red pepper pasta, but we had pepper we had pasta for lunch, so. Oh boy. Do you reckon sticky tofu is better? Sticky tofu. Yes, I think that's a yes. <laughs> Alex came to the gym with me. How do you like it? I parallel uh, parked somewhere kind of tight. I mean, parallel parked is... I did quite a good job, I thought. <laughs> so we did upper body, whoops. We did upper body today and um, it was quite challenging. Jill put us through our paces. I feel like because with co-pilot fitness, they give you like a different set of workouts every I think five weeks or six weeks so you have like a new cycle and this one's definitely she's up the intensity or the hardness of it so like the combination of the exercises are I just I'm exhausted doing it because it's intense oh. I feel tired do you well my arms are tired yeah, yeah it's a good workout though it's a good stretch at the end I love the stretch at the end there's a guy behind who was doing like a full body stretch very David impressed. I've been stretching for like half an hour. I know it's so good for you though, so important. I need to Just stay at home. What are you doing? He probably did a workout. Just go home. <laughs> I need to start going back to yoga classes. I was trying to see if I could find one that was at the weekend because that would work really well for me. We were going to go to a sound bath, but we never did. Yeah, because you didn't want to do that. <laughs> well, if I was to book like restorative yoga, like lazy yoga, would you do it with me? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I did try and book it with my friends, but my friends in Cornwall live all over the shop, so we couldn't make it work with our schedules and the location. So I think I just need to go by myself. And my sister, she's got a toddler, so it was a bit difficult with timings for that as well. Because lots of the yoga classes are at like 6 or 7 p.m. And that just doesn't work if you're a mum. Uh, so it was a bit challenging and then there's the other ones were like at 10 in the morning when obviously we're all working so Anyway, we're going yeah. to the library to return a book oh, To renew a book Renew a book And we are Gonna go home Have some breakfast, very late breakfast And because I got stuck in the editing so hole again What's restorative? Just, Just really slow, like stretching. hatha yoga like you're, so there's different types of yoga like vinyasa or like yoga where it's like a flow where you're going to be 
kind of trying to get your heart rate going mm. which is really good for your breath because it's all to do with like breath work and raising your heart rate and doing it with with a with a movement so it's very meditative and very like it can process a lot of feeling and it also can really help with your body yeah but the yoga that i love is the yin yoga i think it's yin yoga where or hatha yoga or restorative yoga it's very slow they're all different but they're yeah. all slow uh they're all different for different things but it's where you hold poses for longer and so you're really really getting into that deep stretch and that can also release a lot of emotion and feeling and also tension and it's very meditative i find i go go into a very like deep sleepy state yeah and we did the sort of the restorative hatha yoga in the wales yoga yeah. retreat do you remember is the one that was like we we're practically falling asleep blended into I think it's mainly because I do strength training. I don't need to do, I don't feel the need to get my heart rate up in yoga to do those kind of vinyasa flows. And I'm probably gonna watch this back and be like, Maddie, you've got all the words wrong. <laughs> I think I've got the words right. But if I'm wrong, I will correct myself. I'm not very good at having that memory for words. Yep. Am I? I always forget. Otherwise known as memory. No, but I have a great memory for some things. Like I could, I could walk somewhere or drive somewhere once and I will remember the way. Interesting, because every time we go out lately, you are like, please put the Google Maps on, I don't know where I'm going. And we're like two minutes from No, my that's, no, that's when we're going somewhere we've never been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when we're going somewhere we've never been. I need the sound. Yes, but for the first half hour of the journey, you know the way. Yeah, but I want but to it's know. Like, sure. It's like an anxiety. If you don't know where the destination is, you lose all memory <laughs> of the journey. Yes. So if I don't know the destination, I have to have the sat nav on, yeah. even if. Okay, memory card ran out. That's probably a sign for us to stop bickering about this sort of stuff. But... Bickering. I was just proving my point. <laughs> but yeah, I um, I panic about the moment when. Oh. I panic about the moment when I won't know where I'm going, and Alex is really slow at telling me directions. So you'll literally be coming up to the roundabout and I'm the first car at the roundabout and he still hasn't told me where I'm going. And I'm like, I need to know where I'm going, I need to indicate. And actually, I would say probably we get, we have our most arguments in the car. Mm. Like, we yeah. will argue the most in the car like over stuff like that. I like to be quiet in the car. And Maddie likes to be loud. No, it's it's usually to do with the sat-nav. That's why also I've decided that the sat-nav always, always needs to be on. Because most of the time the reason that we will argue is because you've not told me the directions. It's a car. And so then I get stressed and then it will just... So it's like, that's why I say put the sat-nav on because it just means we don't argue. Hmm. You say so. <laughs> it's true. We haven't argued in the car recently. Oh, and that's, shut up. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's because the sat nav's always been on. I yeah. found the solution. This is what we've learned in, yeah. in marriage. There's one piece of marital advice is to not argue about the thing that you're arguing about. If, you, if there's a problem in your marriage, if there's a problem in your relationship. Just brush it under the rug. <laughs> no. Take it from me. <laughs> you don't argue. Find a solution together and be a team. Yeah. So that is an example of if you're arguing in the car over sat nav and directions find the solution or if there's like a, a personal issue like an emotional issue then instead of getting too upset like tell the person you're upset and all but also try and figure out a solution to the problem what was it the problem i was having yeah this morning about the gym alex was taking his time and i was getting annoyed because you were you said i'm going next door to work so there was no <laughs> deadline no rush well i quite like to go between eight and nine and it was half nine and i was getting annoyed and then i was like no maddie don't get annoyed figure out a solution so i said to him explicitly we will go to the gym together at nine if that works for you and we figure out a specific day that we go so then i don't get annoyed and then you don't know yeah. uh, you you know my expectation and then you say it and then you get in the car and you say it again alex is just, just the, i'm trying to be all serious and help <laughs> you messing argument, around. the new car argument is that the cable is not good enough oh my god yeah he took the cable out the car I took the cable out of the car to clean the car and also take the car to get service and he from MOT, which Maddie doesn't has no involvement in. And <laughs> well, she's I should, upset as, as I should have. Without having looked for her cable, that the cable is Look wrong. Look at this cable, it's really long and it doesn't work. My phone doesn't say ch ch plugged in. Where is my cable, Alex? Yeah. Where is it? I don't know why it has to plug in to do like Apple CarPlay. No, that's annoying. Very annoying. Anyway, off he goes to the library. Bye. 
we just attempted to do the good thing of uh, taking stuff to the charity shop. Parked, walked off. This <laughs> and just fell off. What? The car. Oh no. What? Um, and they're not taking donations. Well, it doesn't matter because you can fix that in editing. It is quite level as well. Yeah, I'll just fix it in post. Yeah. exceptionally challenging and scary. Do not copy me. Obviously I'm sharing this on the internet. I'm doing this at my own peril, my own risk. We could have obviously got a more professional setup or got a professional to do it, but I did that on my own risk and Alex was holding the ladder. But that was a bit nerve wracking. It's mainly just that it was really like, you had to use a lot of your strength to reach across, but we've done the top, the first coat. And I think hopefully we only need to do like just a quick go over for those top pieces and the rest I'll do more of a thorough coat but you won't really see it. The main bulk's done now. So now we're gonna make some soup and have a break. I'm just making a very quick coconut tomato soup. This is from my first ebook, Versatile Vegan. I've halved it, but what I've done is literally a tin of chopped tomatoes, a tin of coconut milk, and I started it by frying onion, garlic, ginger, and then I added in a bit of chili, not too much, and um, a pepper, because we had some from our vegan omelets we made this morning, so I thought I may as well throw that pepper in. And then you just put the coconut milk and the chopped tomatoes in. I've just put a little bit of water in there, from the tins just to get the remainder season and that's literally it a really easy soup and then you just blend it with a hand mixer and we're going to have it with this beautiful loaf of bread we've cut into it but alex made this you see a little square shape uh, i'll get him to pronounce it but it's a french loaf i think a countryside french loaf from the paul hollywood book and i can't wait to eat it it's got rye flour in it so it's a bit different I am not making this aesthetic because I'm so tired but we have our tomato soup Alex got butter I've got olive oil because I was just craving it with this bread I feel like it will taste so delicious and we've got this really nice um organic Greek extra virgin olive oil from Crete that is just delicious. And this is my perfect lunch.
okay the wind has made it pretty unbearable but <laughs> it's looking so good we've done this section and around here so that's one coat at this end gosh it takes a long time 